What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, we are talking captaincy ahead of double game week 27. Obviously going to be looking at Man City players and then looking at other matches as well to see if there's any other picks we should be making. Should we really be choosing Southampton, for example, Spurs as well to be talked about? And there's a few other games as well. So if you enjoy it, please do hit the like button, hit subscribe if you're new around here as well. I am recording this before the press conferences. So obviously, if there's any key information, take that into to account before making your decision and at the end let me know who you're captain in as well in the comment section otherwise let's jump into it okay so let's start off with the obvious one manchester city against man united at home and southampton at home so two home games in this double game week and they've been pretty good to us over the last few weeks i know last week didn't quite go as planned in terms of starts for players obviously gundogan didn't get very much De Bruyne did okay though uh, and obviously diaz and stones both scored but they conceded in one of the games um, as well so it's a bit of a weird situation but i think most people are going to be looking at man city players for their captaincy this week quickly looking at the defenses first before we talk about the various options so expected goals conceded on average this season by man united is 1.15 is 1.32 for southampton uh, and they've kind of stayed around the same the uh, last six matches for them obviously i think still includes the man united game uh, and man united's defense has got slightly better as well but overall i would still put them in and around the kind of 1.15 mark so not bad defense man united but not the best in the league and the thing is man city's attack is obviously very good so i think we can all agree there's probably going to be goals in both these games uh for man city the main discussion or the main kind of talking point really is who is going to start both right that is the key concern because people with kevin de bruyne they got pretty good points in the double game we've just gone at least better than gundawan but gundawan also got a rest so is he now a better option i see players like de bruyne gundawan sterling um diaz potentially stones it's hard to say they're all going to start against man united the key question is will they also start against southampton now for gundawan I would say he probably will. For De Bruyne, I'm a little bit less sure. Now, I spoke about this in the team selection video earlier today. The reason for that is, can I see him playing three games, uh, two games in a row, sorry, then two in the double game week and Fulham and the Champions League? At some point, he's probably going to get a little bit of a rest. It could come in the Champions League right he missed the last game um he wasn't long back from injury sure but he's missed quite a few champions league games this season so that has the potential to happen looking at recent stats right that's last four matches sterling comes out on top gundogan 1.27 expected goal involvement de bruyne is down at 0.86 so looking at that it looks pretty bad but i wouldn't put too much emphasis on last four in this case because Gundogan, to be fair, has missed minutes, and so has Kevin De Bruyne. And when you look at that overlying stats, or sorry, underlying stats for over the whole season, Kevin De Bruyne is still just about above. In terms of goal threat, there isn't much difference between them, but it's just De Bruyne's assist threat that puts him further ahead. And I know Gundogan came on um, in that match, obviously got the assist from just a rebounded shot. I think it was from outside the area, the original shot. But like in the previous game, he was getting into the penalty area and finding good um space it's just about whether or not they can find him there so for me while i think kevin the boyner if they both play 90 minutes is the better option i'm not sure how much money i would bet on that happening so right now if i had gundawan he'd probably be my number one choice obviously if you've got other players here like foden is almost certainly going to get at least one start possibly two um sterling again he could get one or two Mares is an interesting one because there's a chance that he misses Man United and then plays Southampton and arguably that's the better fixture right so if you could get some minutes against Man United and play against Southampton that could be decent the other option to look at are defenders now as a Stones and Cancelo owner I will say straight away I'm not confident in predicting either of those players um, getting two starts but Ruben Diaz why wouldn't he get two starts he seems to play pretty much every single game when he's fit he's definitely starting the Man United game so then it's just a gamble on whether he plays against Southampton. And who wouldn't back two clean sheets for Man City here? They're so good. They're going to restrict Man United. They've Man United have found it very hard to break teams down recently. We saw that against Crystal Palace. Missing Paul Pogba a bit. I don't want to put like all the blame on the fact that he's missing, but it's not helping. Uh, and Man City's going to be a much tougher task than it was against Palace. So I guess the only 
upside for Man United maybe is Man City will at least want to come out and play. Yes, they trap back very quickly to win the ball back. But they do want to actually play. And if Man United can win the ball back, potentially they can counter. But I don't think they're going to trouble that Man City defence too much. So if you wanted to captain Ruben Diaz, it feels like a little bit boring. I know captain and defender. But two clean sheets, if you think that's going to happen, that's 12 points before any bonus, any potential attacking returns. That's pretty decent from a defender, right? So just quickly going back to the attackers before we finish. I wouldn't go near Cancelo and Stones, I don't think. Um, Gundogan, if you've got him, he just seems like a perfectly viable captain this week. I wouldn't be going necessarily out of my way to get Kevin De Bruyne. There's still uh, a chance that some people will bring him in. I think if you do bring him in and you want to take that gamble, he starts both. I do think he's the better captain. But if you're worried about that, I would just go for Gundogan. Otherwise, if you are a Sterling owner, for me, it feels like a pretty safe bet to go for him this week. Um, his stats are looking good. The potential for two starts. And I think the one thing to remember this week versus kind of last week is if you went for some... And let's pretend that we don't know what the scores were. If you go for Sterling, you're backing against a lot of other captains like Fernandez, Salah, Kane. I know none of them did very well, but this week you're only backing against other Man City players because that's where people are going to put their captaincy. So I think you're not probably going to be massively punished if you've got Sterling and not Gundogan, or even if you own both by Captain and Sterling. So I think he's a nice little differential here. Same with possibly Foden or Mares, But Sterling, definitely more likely to get the two starts for me. Uh, otherwise, De Bruyne and Gundogan, who's most people are not perfectly fine captain. They're going to do really well this week. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm skipping over Southampton, right? They play Sheffield United and Man City. To me, that's only a single game week game because... I just fully see Man Man City getting that clean sheet. I just don't see Southampton breaking them down. And therefore, I don't think they're good captain options. I don't think Danny Ings has been that great this season either. I've said that quite a few times over the last few weeks. Maybe he'll be, be okay. If you've got him, perhaps you want to take a gamble on captain him. And arguably, you should captain Danny Ings over a single game with player like Kane or Son or Bale. Uh, but for me, that Man City match just puts me off. And, and Sheffield United are not conceding a huge amount of goals right now, although their underlying stats are not great. So there could be um, goals to come against Sheffield United. So it's not the worst option. But I'm not going to talk about it in its own bit. I'm sorry to say, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Is that a mistake? Should they be included in the main part of the video? Let me know. I think Spurs is where a lot of people are thinking for single game week captaincy. Perhaps less so now that they only scored one goal against Fulham. It was an own goal as well. Like It's like the worst kind of thing that can happen from an FPL point of view. Not only is it an own goal, but it's Deli Ali that gets the assist, who almost nobody um, owned anyway. Uh, so looking at Palace's defensive numbers first... Really bad defence, right? It doesn't matter who they've played recently or not. Over the season, they're bad. 1.49 expected goals conceded is terrible. And I don't really see any reason why that would suddenly get a lot better playing against Spurs. Um, and I think we have to add a third attacker in now. For a lot of the season, it's been Kane or Son. But now it's Kane or Son or Gareth Bale, if you're thinking about bringing him in. Now, over the last four matches... Gareth Bale has not played as many minutes as the other two. But interestingly, he's not far away from Son in terms of expected goal involvement. One thing with Son is he's turned into a bit of a creator. But as you can see, last four matches, only had two shots in the box, right? 0.5 shots in the box on average over the last four. It's not what you want to be seeing. I fully get, by the way, before anyone tells me in the comments, that Son outscored Kane in a double, right? I get that. If he continues to get a couple of assists every game plus bonus, then that could continue to happen. But realistically, when you captain a player, you want goals. Unless you're going to go for a defender like Diaz, you want goals. And Son is just not getting close enough to the goal right now to be scoring. We saw that against Fulham. Um, he created, he kind of created the first goal, right, didn't he? Deli Ali took the shot. I know it turned into an own goal, but that was a Son assist. Every other shot that I can remember was kind of near the edge of the area Kane is still getting shots in the box eight I think he's still the best option is expecting goal involvement is quite high he's missed a few sitters in the double game which I won't go into again which was frustrating but on another day he will score them and he's got penalties as well you know he's going to play every single week so I like him but Bale has to be seen now as an outside shot he's only really played um decent minutes in two games so it's not it's not quite like this but if you doubled his his numbers on screen um, he has played a few minutes in the others as well, but you're looking at 10 shots in the box and four chances created. Suddenly, he's getting close to Kane numbers. So it was a calculated risk or a calculated gamble on captaincy. If you wanted to go single game, right? this is if you're not going for Man City and you wanted to go for Spurs. I don't think Bale's a bad shout. The only thing that slightly puts me off 
is his minutes are still being managed, right? He's not like Kane. He's not going to play 90 every single week. And even against Fulham, where I thought Spurs in the first half were the better side, in the second half they struggled a bit. Uh, and when Mourinho noticed like that was happening, he made a couple of defensive changes, like bringing on, I think it was Lamella um, and, and Lucas Moura. Uh, and I can't remember who the other option was, actually, but took Bale and Ali off, who have been quite attacking. Uh, and that's possibly due to their fitness as well, which is another reason potentially not to look at Bale. But if you want to go single game week, I think this is the best fixture. Crystal Palace are awful. Um, and despite what happened against Fulham, I think Kane and Son are looking good. Definitely Kane for me, though. The fact that Son's not taking enough shots does put me off at the moment. So I'm going to jump straight into other matches. To be completely honest with you, I think so many people are going to be looking at Man City and Spurs. I don't want to spend huge chunks of this video chatting about other matches people don't really care about. It is a little bit harsh not to have talked about Southampton, but Sheffield United away, Man City away, like I said, is very tough. I also think a lot of people probably jumped off Danny Ings last week because of his performances in the previous double game week as well so i'm going to assume that not many people own him i think salah versus fulham i just i was going to put that as its own match as well but i just know people would shout at me about that because although i think salah's underlying numbers are good like the chelsea game is just going to put a lot of people off and fulham really are not conceding lots of goals one thing I noticed last night watching Spurs versus Fulham is Spurs did win the ball back quite a lot and quite often in Fulham's half I noticed or at least just over the halfway line but Fulham were very quick to get back into a good shape to win it back themselves potentially Liverpool on their day have I don't know more key players that could exploit that Salah and Mane running in behind but I'm just not sure that's how that match is going to go especially you know Salah got brought off last night and part of me just thinks Getting brought off after 60 minutes, or whatever it was, like 60 to 65, he was hugely frustrated. Um, and some people will say, well, he's going to come into this Fulham game absolutely angry. Like Part of the reason he got brought off was because of tracking back. But this guy is a goal scorer. He's the top scorer um, for Liverpool. He's going to want to show that he shouldn't be brought off against Fulham. But that's not enough for me to want to captain him. Like I think at this point, people are more likely to sell him than they are to captain. So I think that's potentially a good fixture for Salah. Um, but I fully understand why people aren't looking there. Um, and elsewhere, I think that's about it. Like West Ham versus Leeds... I think you could see Antonio as a potentially good outside captain option there. Leeds do get quite a few good chances. Like I spoke about in the team selection, though, I do wonder if the fact that he's kind of conserving energy, not taking too many sprints, might mean that he has to... I don't know, is he going to find it difficult to find space? It's a difficult one because Leeds do give you space and they do give you chances. Um, but Antonio could be an option. And again, Chelsea have looked really good, but from a defensive point of view, they're not scoring too many goals. Werner... I don't know when he's going to get uh, into a run of games scoring goals, but I certainly wouldn't be looking there this week. And I think that's about it. Like Jamie Vardy versus Brighton, absolutely not. Not without Madison and Barnes uh, and how well Brighton have been defending. And, and no other matches really take my interest. So I think Man City, definitely the best captain options this week if you're going to go for double. And if you're going to go for single, I think it has to be Spurs. So that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here. We have passed 100 146,000 subscribers so we're now 4k away from 150k so if you've enjoyed the video you're enjoying the content please do hit that subscribe button and lastly if you haven't already checked out patreon patreon.com slash let's talk fpl link in the description below if you want to sign up to that slack access early team reveals all videos converted to podcasts loads of perks and benefits over there if you want to check it out if you haven't already link in the description below i'll leave it there that is the last video for today uh, but tomorrow we'll have a deadline stream ahead of of course the deadline so hopefully i'll see you there it should be a big one lots of questions to be answered until then i'll catch you soon